بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we have توفيق to attend one more night of Muharram and show our love and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the respect that we show to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the martyrs of Karbala. We said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has some general universal laws in his creation and in his legislation. And if we know these laws, we can better understand what should we do and what we should not do, how we can achieve success, how can we uh, can avoid failure. But if we don't know these laws, then we would be like a person that always wants to go by trial and error, wants to just make mistakes and learn. And many times uh, there is no second chance for you. It's not that always you will be given lots of chances so that you can learn. In life, there are many, many decisions that there is no reverse, there is no way to undo them. So we need to be very careful, especially when it comes to communities, to societies, to civilizations. We have to be very careful and not to let what happened to some perished nations and communities to happen to us. So we said these general universal laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be divided into two major groups and each of them has some subgroups. One is what we call unconditional laws or sunan al-mutlaqa. These are those laws that apply to all human beings and it does not require something to be done by them in advance. So Allah has the initiative and he has made this universe in the way that these laws operate and function. For mu'min and non-mu'min are the same. But there are also laws which are for a specific group of people. It means that they presuppose some decision, some response, already given by human beings to Allah's initiatives. These laws can be for believers, these laws can be for the people who are wrongdoers. So this is the second category. We started with the first category and we said one of the unconditional laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that in addition to different forms of guidance that human beings have received, whether it be through their instinct, through their innate nature and fitra, through their conscience, through their intellect, Allah has provided every nation, not every person, not every city, not every country, not necessarily every generation, no, every nation has been provided with guidance through prophets. لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا Not لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ قَرْيَةٍ 
رسولا اور في كل جيل رسولا اور لكل شخص رسولا لا في كل امة and last night we talked about this and we said that there is a kind of sub sunnah which comes under this sunnah and that was something that Allah always observes and that is a kind of conformity similarity that must be there between the messenger and the people to whom this messenger has been sent between Rasul and Al-Mursali ilayhim. For example, Allah says, if among you, instead of human beings, there were angels, other than you, we had angels, then we would have sent to them messengers who would be angels. Because an angel can guide an angel, an angel cannot guide human beings. And also a human being cannot guide angels. So if there were angels on the earth, we would have sent also angels. Or about the language, Allah says, we send the messengers who speak to the people that they have been sent to with the same language, with the same tongue. So this is what we discussed last night. There is one more sunnah here under the sunnah of prophetic guidance, which we need to discuss, and then we move on to the second uh, unconditional sunnah. And this is what the Quran teaches us about the way Allah mentally and psychologically prepares people when he sends them messengers. Because it's not just enough you send a messenger. There must be some response in people. The nation to whom this messenger has been sent, they also should be prepared. If they are not prepared, then they would not accept. Even if they are prepared, still they may not accept. But as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan is concerned, He tries to prepare them. Question. How you prepare people for welcoming messengers? This is a very important question. Should we give them lots of wealth and power and make their life very comfortable so that they are prepared to welcome messengers? Or we should prepare them in another way. Look at these two verses of the Quran. One is verse 42 of Surah Al-An'am. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim. Thank you very much. Walakad arsalna ila ummin min qablik. We have certainly sent messengers to the nations before you. Ummah is the plural for Ummah. As we said, messengers are sent to Ummah. So we have sent to nations before you. فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ Then we took them, we tested them, tried them, with difficulties, with problems, so that they become humble. So, quite opposite to what we think, that people should be physically and worldly very comfortable, and they should have no challenge so that they can welcome. The reality is that human beings, unfortunately, when everything is all right, they become arrogant and proud. 
the people who have some problems in their life. People who feel that they have some weakness, some limitations, they become humble. And they are ready. So Allah says, أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَّرَّعُونَ So that maybe they would be humble and humbly call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and welcome. In Surah Al-A'raf, verse 93, is very similar point. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِي قَرْيَةٍ مِنْ نَبِيٍّ إِلَّا أَخَذْنَا أَهْلَهَا بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَضَّرَّعُونَ We have not sent to any city, to any developed place. Qarya, as we said, is not necessarily a village. Qarya in the Quranic sense can be also a Medina, means a place in which people have come together. And there are lots of discussions here, but for the time being we say just a place which is developed and there are people who live together. As you remember, we said Allah doesn't need to send to every qarya a messenger. But when he sends a messenger, he sends to one qarya. He doesn't send a messenger to a desert or, for example, to the Bedouins. Actually, we said the messenger will be sent to Ummul Qura of that nation, to the major city of that nation, which is a very important point. We reflected last night on that. So, when Allah sends a prophet to a city, which is a hub, like, for example, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent to To Mecca. When we say he was sent, means he was appointed, not that he was outside. It means he was given a message. Rasul is the one who has been given a message to deliver. So, Rasulullah or any prophet, when they were sent to a nation, but starting with a city, with a town, the people of that town were tested with difficulties, with suffering, with some pressure. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَذَّرَّعُونَ In the previous ayah we had لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَّرَّعُونَ This Baba Tafa'ul and sometimes can be Adgham. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَذَّرَّعُونَ Here it says يَذَّرَّعُونَ It's the same thing from تَذَرُّعُ Tadarru means you desperately call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And the same concept is here. So this is one of the general patterns that repeatedly was happening and occurring in the course of history. So you should not think this is a bad sign when there are difficulties and problems. Actually, it can be a sign that Allah wants to soften the hearts and prepare them psychologically for responding to a call for transformation. If you are enjoying yourself and you are very comfortable, then you don't want to move, you don't want to change. The people who suffer, the people who are not pleased with what they are going through, they are happy to be part of a movement for change, for transformation, for reform. So this is something that is about the sunnah of guidance through the prophets. The second sunnah, which is again universal, is the sunnah of Al-Ibtila, Al-Imtihan, Al-Iftitan, Al-Ikhtabar, whatever you call it. There are different terms in Arabic for this. The Sunnah of testing and trying and examining 
This is very general again. Individuals are tested. Communities are tested. Nations are tested. Civilizations are tested. Poor and rich, all are tested. You can never say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, please don't test me. If you don't want to be tested, then it means that you have to leave this world. You can pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please don't test me with something that I would not be able to pass. Otherwise, there must be a test. You cannot be in this university without exam. But you are constantly being examined. It's not just end of the year, end of a stage. We have constant process of examination. This is very general rule. And this is actually a major part of human progress. Because unless you are examined, you are not given chance to learn to prove yourself, to develop yourself. Some people don't like exams. Maybe some students don't like exams. But those who are really interested in learning, not only they love exams, they go and buy you know, books in which there are questions and exams. They always want to keep themselves fresh. And they know it's through answering these exams that they can learn. And then a time reaches that actually you feel you enjoy being tested. Yeah? Imagine if you have prepared yourself for exam. You have spent time, you are very much prepared. And you go and they say, today exam is canceled. You feel very bad. You say, I wish exam was there. But those who don't study, if exam is canceled, they say, Alhamdulillah. I wish the whole school is canceled. <laughs> and we just play on the street. So depending on your approach, you can hate exams or you can welcome exams. Let us reflect on some verses of the Quran about this general sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is actually something that very much relates also to the story of Karbala. Because the event of Karbala was a very big exam. But the beauty is that in this exam, it's not that people are given the same paper. Yeah? Every person is examined differently. Inshallah, I will mention one of the sunnah of Allah is the differences among people. You would never find the similar exams for two people. Every person's exam paper is different. Even for the same person in different times and conditions, are different but even people that we think are in the same condition their exams are different because they are not really in the same condition in surah baqarah we have this famous ayah verse 155 a'udhu billahi min ash we will certainly try you, test you. There is lam for ta'kid, for emphasis. There is nun mushaddad for emphasis. Means we would certainly test you. With what? In the Quran, we learned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can test us with good things and with bad things. With difficulties and with blessings. In this ayah, the reference is made to the problems, to the difficulties. 
But sometimes Allah refers to the good things. You can be tested through your children. You love your children. You love your money. Your reputation. This can also be test. Okay, so good things and bad things, everything can be a test. But in this ayah, the reference is made to problems. Bishay'in min al khawf. Sometimes you are tested with fear. There is fear. Fear is very general. It can be fear of poverty. You know, one of the weapons of shaitan is that always makes us afraid of poverty. Always shaitan says, you may become poor, save more, collect more, spend less, don't give anything to others, maybe you would need yourself. So shaitan always wants to frighten us of poverty. Yeah? But fear can be fear of illness. Fear because there is no security, there is no safety, there is no respect, because there is no love. You are afraid of marrying because there's fear of divorce. You are afraid of starting a business because market is not good or too many people cheat. You are afraid of starting anything because there are too much troublemakers. So there are lots of different types of fear. And no one loves fear in this sense because it's leading to lack of confidence, to lack of you know, peace of mind. So one way of being tested is through khawf. One is walju' hunger. This is something that we very quickly feel. Yeah? It doesn't take you more than a few hours to feel hunger. Fear may take few days, few months, few years to develop fear. Sometimes you are so naive that you have no fear. After you, know, you do something, you start fearing. But hunger can very quickly be felt. Especially if it's fear of hunger for your family, for your children. Sometimes you are tested with the loss in your money. If my money is lost, what should I do? Sometimes two people have issues, for example, over a transaction, over a business. Sometimes they have issue with dividing inheritance. And you see, because of this, they lose almost everything else. So they could just lose money, but now they lose relations, they lose respect. They lose even Iman because they start saying bad things about each other. So it's a big test. Test can be by loss in anfus. If my father, my mother, my child, my brother, my sister, my wife, husband die, or if God forbids few of them die, there is an accident, few of them. It's a test, it's not easy. Wasamarat, fruits, either fruits in the sense of you are a farmer and you lose the fruits of your farm or fruits of your life. Sometimes you have established something, you have made something important for yourself. Maybe you started a business, maybe you started, I don't know, a kind of masjid, whatever. And you lose it. So what are you going to respond? So this is one ayah. Then we have some verses in the Quran that actually go to a very higher level of test that is very worrying. So these are important, very important, but there are tests that happen to 
believing nations. There are tests for even messengers and their followers that are so severe that they are at the, on the edge on the edge of losing their hope. In Surah Baqarah, verse 214, A'udhu Shaytan rajim It's very worrying. Am hasabtum an tadkhulul jannah walamma ya'atikum mathalul ladhina khalaw min qablikum? Do you think you will enter heaven while the example of previous nations has not yet happened to you? You have not gone through what they went through. Then Quran itself explains what happened to them. Masadhum al ba'sa wa dharra. They were so much touched, so much experienced difficulties that life became very difficult for them. Vazulzilu to the extent that they were shaken. This is not earthquake. This is being shaken in your hope, in your iman, in your trust. To the extent that not people who lacked Iman. No, even the people who were with the messenger and the messenger himself were saying when the victory and assistance from Allah is coming. Every day enemies created troubles and they were on the edge of losing their hope. They didn't lose the hope, but they were asking Mata Nasrullah, why it's so late? Why it's delayed? When I was reflecting on these verses, then I was telling myself that we have to be very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that despite all the challenges that we have today for living a life of faith and upbringing our children, but still we are not in that difficult situation. Alhamdulillah, we have so much of positive power and positive institutions that alhamdulillah we are very hopeful and we feel very empowered but if god forbids the situation becomes much much worse to the extent that you would see Someone in your own community or families, they deviate, they lose their iman, they lose their hope. They say, we are not able to cope with these challenges. I want to stop practicing. Even if God forbids that point comes, you should not be despaired. Actually, that's the time that, inshallah, a very big thing will happen. We have this beautiful hadith which says kun lima la tarju arja minka lima tarju with respect to the things that you have no hope for be more hopeful than the things that you have hope for and then in the hadith the example of Musa alayhi salam is given and the example of the queen of Saba. Musa alayhi salam, when he was taking his family in the dark night, in a cold night, his main concern was to take them safely to their destination. He didn't imagine that something great is going to happen. Maybe the greatest thing in his life, and that is to be spoken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He saw a fire, he just went to see if he can take part of fire and bring as a source of light and also to warm themselves. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
talk to Musa alayhi salam. So he had no hope for that. He was even struggling for survival. Or when the queen of Saba went to see Prophet Suleiman, she didn't expect to become a believer and have a change so positive. So when problems become too much in your personal life or community life, don't lose your hope. Keep trying because it must be just you are one inch away from success. Maybe a little bit more patience is need, needed so that you climb the whole mountain. This is the sunnah. If we see everything is nice and enjoyable, no problem, we have to worry. Are we going to the right direction? Because how can we climb a mountain and everything is flat and smooth and you know, we are going with maximum speed? If there is no challenge, we have to be worried. Maybe we are going to the wrong direction. This road is not supposed to be so flat and so easy. In the verse 140 and 141, 42, up to 44 of Surah Al Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again refers to the sunnah of examining, examining and testing. وَتَلْكَ الْأَيَّامِ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we turn these days between people, among people. One day this person is power, another day someone else is in power. Governments change, parties change, kingdoms change. Even in cities, in families, lots of changes are there. But one of the reasons for this is we want to see who are believers. If things are always fixed, you cannot realize who are committed. Yeah? For example, if Madalas is always organized and tidy, we don't realize who are really committed. But if, for example, now power goes off, I hope it doesn't go off, and we have some problem, then we realize who are running away and who are remaining to help others. This is only can be known when power goes off. Right now, we cannot understand this. When there is a problem, when there is a shortage, when there is a need for sacrifice, it's only then that you can find good people. Also, Allah wants to take some of you as witness. It's very important. Not only you manage to do something great for yourself, but you become a witness for other people. Then Allah keeps reminding people of their capacity by pointing at you. Now, after centuries, we find endless energy in the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Yeah? It's not that only few people can be inspired by them. Billions of people can be inspired by them. Why? Because they were tested and they managed to give a positive response, then they became shuhada. Shuhada not only in the sense of martyrs, in the sense of witnesses. Now everyone can refer to them and say, I can also follow their path. So Allah doesn't only want your success. Allah wants also to make you an example for others. So you should not just aim at passing the exam. Try to be always the excellent student that Allah can show other people and say, you know, you can also become like this. You can become even better than this. You know, this beautiful ayah in the Quran, 
we say rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyyatina qurrata ayun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama it's very beautiful you have to be ambitious not in dunya but in spirituality you have to be ambitious instead of saying oh allah make my children say their prayer and fast and observe hijab which is minimal say oh allah make my children make them something that i can always get energy when i look at them and remember them they can be my joy of life peace of mind we want to be inshallah leaders of muttaqin not that i just want to be muttaqi if i just want to be muttaqi then there is a chance that i even don't end up with being muttaqi you must have heard this famous story i heard it first from my teacher in tehran he said someone who was an alim asked his son who was a talab what do you want to become he said i want to become like you because his father was an alim and he had respect for his father he said i want to become like you his father said i am sorry for you i wanted to become like imam sadiq and become <laughs> like this i wanted to become a true follower of imam sadiq if you want to become like me you become nothing so if we just want to be muttaqi then we may not even become like for example if the passing mark is 60 and you say i want to get 60. i have planned everything that i studied this much and then i will get 60. okay then you may not get 60. you may fail but you must aim at getting a star say okay either a or a star not b then maybe inshallah you pass the exam or inshallah you get something more maybe you become inshallah an inspiring figure for other people so allah wants to take some of you as witnesses for other people the shia who live in the uk in the us in canada in the west they should not just aim at surviving with iman they should aim at reaching such a level of taqwa and commitment and loyalty that inshallah people in other parts of the world they can say oh if they can survive and be so excellent we must definitely try our best to become like them or better so we can inspire them Allah doesn't love those who do injustice. It's interesting. Allah doesn't say he hates them, but he says he doesn't love them. The people who do zulm. And this zulm can be zulm to yourself. When you don't grow your potentials, you are doing zulm to yourself and to the community, to the family, to everyone. Allah wants to really purify mu'mineen. But for purification, you need to be challenged. Unfortunately, there is no way to be purified in resort holidays and four or five star you know, hotels. If life is just like a holiday, you cannot be purified. The maximum is to remain. If you don't lose, <laughs> at least you remain. It's in difficulties. If you want to train commandos, where do you train commandos? You have to train them in deserts and forests, not in, you know, houses of their mother or aunts. <laughs> In Farsi, we say, when someone is very comfortable, it seems aunt's houses were more comfortable than your own house because you are a guest. In your home, maybe your mother asked you to do something. In Farsi, we say, if you are in your aunt's house, you cannot become 
an exemplar person. Allah wants to destroy the people who fight and reject the truth. Then, Am hasabtum an tadkhulul jannah. Similar to the previous ayah that we had. وَلَمَّا يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا مِنْكُمْ وَيَعْلَمَ الصَّابِرِينَ Do you think you will enter heaven while still those who are mu'min, those who are patient, are not known? Are not known means because they don't exist. <laughs> because if there is no test, what is the meaning of patience? So it's not that it's just a matter of being known. It means a matter of coming to existence, coming to the light so that they are known. As I said, test can be also in positive things. For example, wa anfusikum. Surah Al Imran, verse 180. You will be tested in your money, in your lives. Wa wa fitna. Surah Anfal, verse 28. The last ayah for test, because there are many ayah about this, is the famous ayah that we have in Surah Al-Ankabut. أَحَسِبَ النَّاسِ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do people think that it's just enough to say we are mu'min and yutraku, you will be left to yourself. You say, I am mu'min, say, okay, mashallah. So you pass. You are mu'min, go to heaven. No, you must be tested. How we can make sure that you are mu'min and not a munafiq? You have to be tested. We have tested people who were before them. Allah is going to test to know who are the people who are truthful and those who are liars, those who are honest in their claim of Iman and those who are fake in their claim of Iman. Okay, inshallah we continue this discussion tomorrow. As I said, a very outstanding collective test was the event of Karbala. And every person, of course, as I said, is tested differently. And we expect different answer from every person, depending on your capacity, your role, your influence, your condition, you are tested. Sometimes we are tested as a group, but it's not that we have the same test. It's very difficult. For example, when, God forbids, if a family loses a child, okay, they have all lost a child, but the way mother is tested, the way the father is tested, the way brothers and sisters are tested, everyone is different, the way grandparents are tested, we can say they all lost this child, but everyone is tested differently. Even depending on your age, your condition, you are tested differently. But for sure, Karbala was a major test. And I can say in Karbala, everyone was tested at the peak of their capacity. Because it was such a unique combat between truth and falsehood, between humanity and those who lacked basic humanity, that people were given opportunity to show the best that they had or to bring out the worst that someone can have. So you, in Karbala, you have maximum contrast because the test was so severe. You know, imagine if I ask you to prepare a test that we would not have someone in the middle 
Either people pass or fail. So this test has to be very severe. So everyone was tested in the way that they could show the maximum positivity or negativity that a human being can have and can have developed over time. And because human beings are free, then you see different responses. One of the beauties of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that human beings always can surprise you in a positive way, but sometimes in a negative way. Because at every moment, they can make a free choice. You can never completely predict human beings because someone who has been very good so far can change. Someone who has been so bad can change. You never know. Even you can never be sure about yourself. Unfortunately, many times we make mistakes. Many good people, when they become famous or popular or have power, they think there is no way I become a bad person. There is no way that shaitan penetrates into me because I've always been good. But the reality is that you can always change. Sometimes I say, even if you are so good that you shake hand with Jibrail, this doesn't guarantee that tomorrow you are a good person. So I should be very careful and alert. I cannot say, Alhamdulillah, since I was a teenager, you know, I was a good or you know, this or that. No. You can fail when you are 80 years old. You can fail when you are 90 years old. Always you have to be alert. And on the other hand, never be hopeless. You can be in the army of Yazid and be a commander who blocked the way for Ahlul Bayt, which led to the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, but still you can come out of it. You cannot stop the mess that you have created. There is no way for Hur to reverse the history. But he could rescue himself. This is also the beauty that you can come out if you like. So there is very important moment in the life of Horabn Yazid al Riyahi. And that is when he had the most difficult test of his life. The narrator says, فَإِذَلْ هُرُّبْنُ يَزِيد قَدْ أَغْبَلَ إِلَىٰ عُمَرِ بْنِ سَعَدْ When the army of Umar Sa'd came, because you know, first Hur was the commander and he stopped Imam. Then he escorted Imam, didn't let Imam go till they reached Karbala and then the army of Umar Sa'd came, so he was under the command of Umar Sa'd. He went to Umar Sa'd. فَقَالَ أَمُقَاتِلٌ أَنْتَ هَذَا الرَّجُلُ Are you really going to fight Hussein? So this shows that Hur was hoping maybe a peaceful solution can come. He was not thinking that they are so vicious that they are going to fight Imam Hussein alayhi salam. فَقَالَ إِيْوَ اللَّهِ This Umar Asad who himself has a very, uh, you know, how can I say, is a kind of outstanding also example of someone that whose life was not always a bad life. But how he changed for worse because of temptation. Someone who was close. He said, I said, By God, I am going to fight him. And the easiest fight is going to be that the heads would fly. And the hands would be cut off. You don't need to talk like this. But you know, when you don't listen to your conscience, 
then you try to somehow get rid of your good past, unfortunately. You know, sometimes people, when they jump from this side of the line to the other side of the line, they don't remain close to the border. They go much away from the middle. They want to say, don't think I am still with them. I am totally different. They want to prove themselves to Yazidi people. You know, he wants to show that you can trust me 100%. If I'm going to fight Hussein, I'm going to fight him severely. So when he heard, heard he this from Umar Asad, he realized that no, these people are so vicious that they are going to kill Imam Hussein. They have no shame. He distanced himself from his companions. He went far from them and stood somewhere thinking. You know, sometimes we have done something and we think it's too late. I cannot come out of this. And we carry on. This is actually one of the biggest common mistakes. For example, I have told some lies. It seems that there is no way to go out. So I have to keep telling lies. I have done some, I don't know, mischief. I have to carry on. It's too late. No. Never continue. Try to come out. If you cannot come out, at least stop where you are. Don't think it's too late. It's never too late. So, Hur, who was a man of character, a man who didn't let people decide for him. This is the meaning of Hur. Who is Hur? If I follow fashion and I don't know, brands and, you know, ideas put in my mind by other people. I am not whore. Whore means I am in charge of my life. I see what is right for me and I do it. I choose something that on the day of judgment I can say to Rasulullah that I did this. Not that, you know, I feel ashamed. So whore took some distance from people and was thinking seriously. You know, people may not take your life seriously. I hope they take, but sometimes people don't take your life seriously. You know, they just give you some lip services. I don't know, they want to just laugh and, you know, joke, have joke with you. But you don't laugh at your life. At least you should take your life seriously. Hor took his life very seriously to the extent that he was shivering this is not something that, you know, you can just relax and make a decision. You don't have that much time to relax. You have to make a serious decision. So, one of the people who was there, his name was Al-Muhajir ibn Aws, told the whore, Wallahi inna amraka lamurimun. By God, your situation is very dubious. If I was told who is the bravest person in Kufa, I would say Hor. Why you are shivering? We have such a big army. Why are you afraid? This is not going to be a difficult battle. He doesn't understand Hor. He judges Hor according to his own value system. He thinks he's worried about his life. He's afraid of fighting. But he was not afraid of fighting. He was afraid of the side that he's taking. He was afraid of to whom he's associating himself. Am I associating myself to the people of values? Or am I am associating myself with the people who have no values? who are just after instant satisfaction. So, Hor said, 
and this is very brief but profound statement that can happen to every person. Actually, many, many times it happens to us. He says, Wallahi, inni ukhayyaru nafsi bayna al jannat wa nar By Allah, I am seeing myself and in a position that I have to choose between hell and heaven. Many times we hide this fact. Say, no, it's not a matter of hell and heaven. It's a matter of having very high position or heaven, or I can a little bit compromise. I don't want to be very high. I, I can be still in heaven. <laughs> Who said I am going to hell? But Karbala, as I said, the contrast was so much, and Hor was also so free thinker that he realized, no, you cannot, you know, compromise here. It's very clear. Either you are with Hussein and you have chance to go to heaven, or you go out with Yazid and you go to hell. He found that this is very clear calculation. You don't need to be very sophisticated to understand whether you want to take the side of Hussein or Yazid. فَوَاللَّهِ لَا أَخْتَارُ عَلَى الْجَنَّةِ شَيْئًا وَلَوْ قُتْعَتُ وَأُحْرِقَتُ Even if I am made into pieces and I am burnt, I am not going to choose hell over heaven. So not only I am not going to volunteer myself, even if they kill me and burn me, I am not going to fight Hussein. So this is a person of character. This is a beautiful soul here, which was dusted by association, but the jewelry inside is intact. He just needed Imam Hussein to remove that dust and bring the good which was there. As-salamu alayka ya Abu
کربلا این یور شراین این افری مجلس ویچی ستا فور یو وی کام تو ویزیت یو بات پلیز ویزیت آس این پرسن ون وی آر دائیم When we are put in our grave, please visit us in person. As-salamu ala al-Husayn wa ala Ali ibn al-Husayn wa ala Because it is only he who can accept our tawbah. So he said to Allah, my Lord, Elayka anabtu, batubu alayya. Oh Allah, I am returning to you. Please accept my tawbah. Please help me to go to Hussain and get his pleasure. Then he went towards Imam Hussain. Then he said, Jo'il to Fidaq, Ana sahibuka al-lazhi habasaka an al-rudu. O Hussain, may I be your ransom. I am the one who has stopped you and didn't let you return. وما ظننت أن القوم يبلغون منك ما أرى. But I never thought that they are going to reach this point that I am seeing. I never thought they are going to fight you. وأنا تائب إلى الله تعالى. أوزي لا يمبني. فهل ترى لي من توبة؟ Do you see any chance that Allah may accept my tawbah? فَقَالَ الْوَزِيرُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ نَعْمَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Yes, Allah is going to accept your tawbah. فَنَزَّلَ Now you can come down. You are my guest. فقال أنا لك فارسا خير مني لك راضلا وحسين if I am on my horse I can serve you better please let me be on my horse 
and then a time would come that I would come down from the world. ثم قال فإذا كنت أول من خرج إليك فأذن لي أن أكون أول قتيل بين يديك وحسين if I was the first person who stopped you please let me now be the first person from this point on that who that goes and offers his life, life to defend you. you. <laughs> what does Hor want to achieve? Lali akunu man man yusafu jaddaka muhammadan ghadan fil qiyam so that maybe on the day of judgment I can shake hands with your grandfather prophet and say to him that I was the first person to give his life for us. Then he has started fighting after he got permission from him. And when he was going to die, he was on the ground. Imam Hussein alayhi salam went to him. Or when his body was brought to Imam, فَجَعَلَ يَمْسَهُ التُّرَابَ عَنْ رَجْلِ then Imam Hussain started wiping dust away from the face of Hur. وَيَغُولْ أَنْتَ الْهُرُّ كَمَا سَمَّدْكَ أُمَّا أُمُّك هُرًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Then Imam Hussain gave him such a big recognition he says, you are a whore as your mother called you, but you are a whore in dunya and the year after, not just a whore in dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to receive this recognition from Imam Zaman. When we die, our Imam tells us you are a whore. You have you been a noble person, a person, a person of, of character. Nas'aluk Allahumma wa nad'uuk. Bismik al-Azim al-Azam. Al-Azz al-Ajal al-Akram. Wa bidam al-Mazlum, ya Allah. Ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah. يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله او الله please send our humble salutations to imam hussein please include us among true mourners of abu abdullah Please accept our little aza for Abu Abdullah. Please have kind attention to our majlis and all majalis of Abu Abdullah. Please enable us to follow wholeheartedly the examples of companions of Abu Abdullah. Please enable us to share with the people of the world the beauties of Abu Abdullah and his companions. Please help us overcome our temptations when you test us and examine us. Please help us pass successfully all the tests that we go through as individuals and as community and pave the way for Imam Mahdi's Farah. Please make our generation the generation who prepares for his coming. Please enable us to serve him before and after he comes. 
پلیز بلیس اور مراج اور علماء اور تیچرز اور والنٹیرز اور پیرنس ویڈ ہیلتی اور دیگنی فائد لائف پلیز گیو شفا تو اول پیپل و اور ایل پلیز اسپیشیلی گیو شفا تو ایلنسز دیت بی ایب این اور ہارٹ ان مائند Please make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life. Wa akhiru da'wana nilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.